dynamics of the universe considering the possibility that the universe has many components which some of which may have pressure. Now, <clears throat> for such a situation we worked out the equation that governs the expansion of the universe. We had a second order differential equation which we integrated once to obtain an equation for the Hubble parameter at any instant of time. And when we did this integral there was a constant of integration when we did when we integrated the second order differential equation there was a constant of integration which we consider as a kind of fictitious matter as in we add it include it as an extra component in the variety of matter that we have. So, we can have say 4, 5, 6 components we increase it by 1 to accommodate this extra constant of integration and we refer to this fictitious kind of constituent of the universe as the curvature. The reason for which I shall explain in subsequent lectures. So, having done that we are led to this equation where the square of the Hubble parameter is at any instant of time is equal to H naught the present value square into the sum of the contributions from the different densities. This is essentially the, con the contributions from the different densities divided by the present value of the critical density. And we have written that as in terms of the present value of the density parameter of these different components. So, I can have 3, 4, 5 different components each of them the quantity the, the amount of matter in each of them is quantified by the present value of its density parameter omega i naught and we have to scale it with the appropriate power of a to compensate to take into account the fact that the density changes with the expansion of the universe. And then if you apply this equation at the present epoch you have h naught square and h naught square here. So, you are led to the equality that the sum of all these omega i's sum of all the density parameters is equal to 1. <coughs> then I had told you that we are going to consider a cosmological model we are going to consider a cosmological model where there are 4 different kinds of components. This is the simplest possible situation which is consistent roughly consistent with existing observations. So, these 4 different components that we are going to consider throughout this course are the matter also referred the usual matter also referred to as dust. This is a pressureless component the equation of state the parameter in the equation of state for dust is 0. So, it has no pressure the density in this component into a cube is a constant and the dark matter which I had introduced is an example of this it falls in this category. Then we had we have another component the radiation relativistic particles all kinds of relativistic particles have this kind of a behavior. So, radiation is one example of this a gas of photons massless neutrinos is another example of this all of them we can club together treat as relativistic particles we shall refer to it as radiation. And for this component the pressure is one third into the energy density W is one third. And as the universe expands the density scales as a a to the power minus 4 rho into a to the power 4 is a constant and we denote this by the subscript r. Then there is the curvature component that is where we have accommodated the constant of integration. This is not a real matter this is some fictitious kind of component which accommodates this constant of integration the density can be either positive or negative or 0 depending on the constant of integration real matter would always have positive density. So, this has pressure minus one third. So, the equation of state is that for this component T curvature is minus one third rho C square rho curvature C square and the density parameter here is omega K naught. And finally, we had the cosmological constant I told you that the cosmological constant is a constant that is allowed by the Einstein's theory of general theory of relativity. 
in this Newtonian framework, we can interpret it as a kind of component, kind of substance that fills the universe. And this then has the property that its pressure is minus, minus the energy density. So, W is minus 1 and the density in this component remains a constant as the universe expands. I had also told you that there is evidence, there is substantial evidence that our universe really has something which has an equation of state like this. Okay. Now, people have introduced a general, a more general term, a more general thing than the cosmological constant and it is referred to as dark energy. So, this is some energy, energy density which is believed to fill the universe. It has the property that it has negative pressure. How negative it should be is something I shall discuss shortly, but people have generalized this concept and they have people, we now talk of something called the dark energy. It is something that fills the universe, pervades the universe, some con cosmological component which has negative pressure. This cosmological constant is one possibility, the dark energy could be cosmological constant, but people now, we now talk of a more general scenario where there may be some other kinds of things like scalar fields which also have this kind of a property. So, this the dark energy is a more general term and we shall also refer to this component sometimes as dark energy, sometimes as the cosmological constant. Bear in mind that the dark energy is a more general term and there are other possible possibilities which also may give you something like this. The cosmological constant is just one example. Okay. The other possibility is the density may change somewhat with the expansion, but they have the property that the pressure is minus rho c square, not exactly maybe minus rho c square, there may be a number here, we shall come to these details shortly. But these are the four components that we shall be considering. <coughs> and the present, so the pr current value of the energy density, the densi uh, cosmological parameter in these four components, the sum of them should be equal to 1 in this model. Okay, so, this is the equation that we wish to solve, a dot by a, this is the Hubble parameter is also a dot by a squared. So, this is a differential equation that we have to solve. In this differential equation, the unknown parameter is the scale factor a. We want to solve for the scale factor as a function of time. That tells us the expansion history of the universe. That is what we want to do. Okay. And I had made a graph showing how each of these component, the contribution from each of these components scales with the scale factor as the universe expands. So, this is a plot of the log of each of these contribution versus log of the scale factor. And I had told you that the radiation, the radiation component scales as a to the power minus 4 as the universe expands. That is obvious from this, all of this is obvious from this expression. This is the radiation term, the radiation density scales as a to the power minus 4 as the universe expands. So, it falls in this fashion, the matter density scales as a to the power minus 3. So, when a is extremely small, depending on the value of omega matter and omega radiation, but when A is extremely small, irrespective of these values, there will be some sufficiently small value of A, where the radiation is going to dom dominate over the matter. As the universe expands, the matter falls as A to the power minus 3, the curvature component falls as A to the power minus 2 and the cosmological comp constant component remains constant, the dark energy remains a constant. So, what you see is that early in the universe, when the scale factor is extremely small, it is going to be radiation dominated if there is a radiation component and there is one I have already told you there is the cosmic microwave background radiation. Then it is going to be matter dominated and then if there is a curvature, it will be curvature dominated and finally, it is going to be cosmological constant dominated if all of these four are present. If one of them is absent, then you can forget about it. Okay. And we know for sure that there is radiation and there is matter because we see them. Okay. Now, if there is curvature, if there is cosmological constant, one can determine it from indirect observations. <coughs> now, to get some idea of what happens in each of these, <coughs> to, uh, how the expansion of the universe looks like, 
instead of attacking the full equation with all these four components simultaneously, we were looking at the expansion when there is only one of these components present. So, we first considered the situation where there is only radiation present. And in this situation, the equation becomes a dot by a whole square is equal to h naught omega radiation naught into a to the power minus 4. The other terms are all dropped. Okay. So, this is the equation that we that governs the expansion. There are four terms. We have dropped these three terms and we are considering the possibility that the universe has only radiation. Okay. Not that it really has only radiation, it is the radiation that dominates. So, we are considering the possibility that the situation where the radiation is the most dominant term. Okay. This is the most dominant so that we can ignore these three. So, we are considering the situation where this term dominates over all these three other terms. In that situation, this is the equation and then we can take the square root of this equation. So, what we get is uh, a dot is equal to the square root of this into by a, there is a by a 1 by a here and there will be a to the power minus 2 here. So, a to the power minus 1 and a to the power minus 2 are multiplied by a and I am led to this equation, <coughs> which is straightforward to integrate, no big deal. And we are finally led to the conclusion that the scale factor scales with the expansion of the universe, the scale factor goes as t to the power half. That is the main conclusion. These constants of integration are easy to, these, con these constant coefficients, multiplicative constants are easy to straightforward to work out. So, the scale factor in the radiation dominated era scales as t to the power half. This is something very important and I will urge you to keep this in mind because we are going to refer to these things many a time as we go along this course. So, the scale factor scales as t to the power half in the radiation dominated era. And using this, we can calculate the Hubble parameter also h of t a dot by a. And so, if I differentiate a, which is some constant t to the power half, I get half into that co same constant t to the power minus half. So, a dot by a is half 1 by t or the age of the universe at any instant is half the Hubble time 1 by h. Okay. So, you see when we had free expansion, it was exactly 1 by the Hubble parameter. Now, we have a much smaller value, it is just half of that. So, for the same observation of the Hubble parameter, the age I will infer for the universe depends on the cosmological model. And if I have a radiation dominated universe, the age comes out to be much smaller. It is just half the Hubble time, 1 by h. Okay. <coughs> Next, <coughs> the matter dominated universe. We have considered this in some detail already a few lectures back, where we considered the critical Einstein de Sitter universe, where there was only matter, no curvature, no cosmological constant, no radiation. So, here a dot by a is h naught square root of omega matter naught a to the power minus 3 by 2. Right? I have just taken this equation and taken the square root of it. So, if I take the square root, I have h naught square root of omega matter naught a to the power minus 3 by 2. And I multiplied by a. So, I get a dot is h naught square root of omega matter naught a to the power, this should be minus half and I can write it as square root of a d a is equal to, let me just call this constant k into d t. And if I integrate this, a to the power half, I will get a to the power 3 by 2 into 2 thirds is equal to k t plus a constant of integration which I set to 0 because I want the big bang to occur when t is 0. So, this implies 
that a is equal to so i can take the factor of 3 by 2 on to the other side 3 by 2 and i can put in the constant h not square root of omega matter not <coughs> so i have to take this whole thing to the power of 2 thirds so if i so to the power of 2 thirds t to the power of 2 thirds so the important point over here is that the scale factor scales as t to the power 2 thirds in the matter dominated universe when the universe is matter dominated dominated by pressureless dust the scale factor scales as t to the power 2 thirds we have discussed this extensively and this is going to be extremely important in our subsequent discussion so i will also urge you to bear this in mind and the hubble parameter as we have already worked out is 2 by 3 into 1 by time or the ta age of the universe is 2 third v hubble parameter it is less than the situation where there is no gravity but it is more than the situation when the universe is radiation dominated okay <clears throat> let us quickly consider the situation where there is no gravity this is the situation where the universe is curvature dominated remember that the curvature term is just the constant of integration when i differentiate the second order differential equation for the acceleration so when i have just the constant of integration and nothing else it essentially means that there is no matter there is no gravity there is no gravitational attraction okay so <coughs> the equation in this situation when the universe is curvature dominated is you can see from here a dot by a is h naught square root of omega curvature not 1 by a so curvature a dot is equal to the square root of h naught the square root of omega curvature naught and that is it right a dot by there is a a to the power minus 2 here a to the power minus 2 here it will cancel out so a dot is just omega curvature naught square root of that into h naught okay a to the power minus 2 and a to the power minus 2 will cancel out from both sides so this is what we have and the solution is straightforward the scale factor a of t is h naught omega curvature naught into t and the hubble parameter h of t is 1 by t or equivalently the age of the universe is 1 by the hubble parameter So we see that if there is no gravity, the expansion is a straight line. So we know the slope, the Hubble parameter, the present value of the Hubble parameter is essentially a dot. It tells us the slope of the expansion at present. So the slope at present is determined from observations by age what we mean is we extrapolate this curve backwards until it hits 0 when the scale factor factor becomes 0 that is the big bang so by the age of the universe we mean the epoch that the time that elapses between this this is the present we know the slope of this curve extrapolated backwards in the free expansion omega curvature dominated universe it is a straight line so just draw the straight line until the scale factor becomes 0 this interval is the age of the universe now when you have matter the matter the usual matter or radiation matter this these two things either of them they what the main effect is that they try to slow down the expansion of the universe so if you take the 
current slope and extrapolate it backwards, the expansion was faster in the past because gravity is slowing it down. So it must have been faster in the past. So if I draw the curve, it will look something like this because the expansion was faster in the past and it will reach 0 earlier. So in these two models, in the other two models that we have considered, one where there is only matter and one where there is also radiation, the ages are smaller. Now let us ask the question, why is the age smaller when there is radiation as compared to when there is dust? Now recollect that the acceleration is produced by density plus 3 p by c square. So when there is pressure, there is an extra gravitational attraction. When there is positive pressure, there is an extra gravitational attraction, so the slowing down is much more. So in the past, the universe was expanding much faster in the radiation dominated universe, which gives rise to a smaller age. So the more the slowing down, the smaller the age of the universe. The less the slowing down, the larger the age of the universe. Okay. <coughs> Finally, we have the model with the cosmological constant. <coughs> in this model with the cosmological constant, the, the term over here is a constant. So we are led to the equation. So cosmological constant. So we are led to the equation A dot by A is H naught square root of omega lambda naught okay. or the solution is obvious if I write it like this A dot H naught oh, omega lambda naught A, right. So we are looking for a scale factor which if you differentiate, you get back the same function multiplied by a number. And we know that such a function is the exponential. So the solution to this equation is A dot is some constant A e to the power h naught square root of omega lambda naught t. Right? And the constant of integration that occurs when I integrate this equation is this constant, multiplicative constant now over here. <coughs> so the scale factor, so this, is, so this is the solution, the universe does not expand as a power law, as a power of t, it ex expands as an exponential. This model with a just a, cos so if I have a universe with just a cosmological constant, nothing else, hypothetically let us consider a situation where my universe has just cosmological constant, nothing else. The matter that we see is some test particle. So in this situation, this omega lambda naught is going to be 1 and we will have e to the power h naught t. Okay. Now in such a model, the universe has no big bang, no singularity in the past because the scale factor becomes 0 at t equal to minus infinity. <coughs> Infinite in the past. So th this model has no singularity. The unit, the Hubble parameter A dot by A is independent of time, the universe expands at the same rate throughout. So there is, you cannot say from the Hubble parameter, you cannot say anything about when the universe was created or anything because there was there is no singularity anyway. Okay, it just tells you the time scale of the expansion, that is all. But you cannot, does not tell you any time, preferred time, does not tell you the age or anything. Okay. So this is what happens when there is cosmological constant. Now to really appreciate how this model with the co cosmological constant, how, what the differs from the other models, let us look at uh, we, we should actually look at something slightly different. Let me introduce the deacceleration parameter. So our aim is to quantify and understand the expansion of the universe. Okay. And the Hubble parameter h of t 
a dot by a at any instant tells us the rate of expansion. If the Hubble parameter is positive, the universe is expanding. If it is negative, the universe is contracting. Hubble parameter is 0, the universe is static. And we see that the fact that it is positive, we interpret as the universe expanding. Now, the question arises, is the how does the expansion rate itself change with time, the second derivative? The laws of physics we know are all expressed in terms of second derivatives. So, the question natural question will be how does this expansion rate itself change with time right and this we use the <coughs> deacceleration parameter defined like this q which is a function of time in general a double dot minus a double dot by a divided by the Hubble parameter squared. <coughs> this is the deacceleration parameter. What does this parameter aim to quantify? This parameter aims to quantify the rate at which the acceleration itself, the, the rate at which the expansion itself changes. Okay. The Hubble parameter, remember, has dimension 1 by time. The deacceleration parameter, let us figure out what the dimension of the deacceleration parameter is. The scale factor, if I differentiate it twice with time, then the resulting quantity has dimension of whatever be the units of the scale factor divided by time squared. Now, I divide this by the scale factor. So, this numerator has dimension p to the power minus 2. The numerator also has dimension p to the power minus 2 because the Hubble parameter has dimension of time 1 by time. Okay, so, the time dimension cancels out from the numerator and denominator and finally, we are led to the conclusion that this deacceleration parameter is dimensionless. So, it is a dimensionless parameter which quantifies the deacceleration. Why deacceleration? We know that gravity from our usual experience, we know that gravity is attractive. So, we expect the gravity to be attractive. So, we expect this a double dot to be attractive. So, this parameter has been defined in such a way with a minus sign so that it has a positive value when a double dot is negative, when the universe, when, when if the expansion is slowing down, then this deacceleration parameter has a positive value. It measures the rate at which the universe is essentially slowing down, slowing down, okay, not accelerate. So, it measures the rate at which the universe is slowing down. <coughs> now, let us, for the cosmological model in the framework that we have been working with, let us calculate this deacceleration parameter. So, we go back <coughs> to the equation <coughs> that we have been dealing with. Let me write down the equation again. The equation that we have been dealing with is a double dot. How much is this? What is it that causes the acceleration? How did we calculate this? We collect, we considered a sphere and the mass inside the sphere is what leads to the acceleration. So, how much was that? What is the mass inside the sphere? Mass inside the sphere is 4 third pi a cube. Right, four third pi a cube, a sphere of unit co-moving radius. Four third pi a cube with a minus sign. So there's a factor of g. 
फोर थर्ड पाई एंड देन वी हैव द वॉल्यूम ए क्यूब एंड द लॉ फोर्स ऑफ द ग्रेविटेशनल अट्रैक्शन फॉल्स एज वन बाई ए स्क्वायर सो टू पावर्स ऑफ ए कैंसिल आउट एंड वी हैव द स्केल फैक्टर ए and we have to include the possibility that the material that we are the constituent that we are dealing with has also got pressure right so it will be rho plus 3 p 3 p by c square right this is the <coughs> de acceleration this is the acceleration a double dot minus 4/3 pi g rho plus 3 p by c square into the scale factor a and we had arrived at this equation from purely heuristic arguments and then we just modified it to incorporate the effect of einstein's theory of general relativity <coughs> now let us consider the possibility that there are a variety of components with equation of state where the pressure is the energy density rho c square into some w so let me work out what this a double dot minus a double dot or before doing that let us write this equation first in that way so a double dot is equal to let us get rid of the minus sign it is convenient to have that equation a double dot is equal to <coughs> minus now recollect how much is 4 pi g by 3 it is convenient to write it in terms of the present value of the critical density so in terms of the present value of the critical density how much is 4 pi g by 3 so just recollect this that the we have the present value of the critical density is how much is this 3 h not square by 8 pi g right so we will write this 4 pi this 4 third pi g in terms of this so 4 third pi g 4 third pi g is h not square by rho critical not right this is something that you should remember you cannot for, afford to forget this when throughout the cosmology course that the critical density is 3h square by 8 pi g that's the density a very important density for our universe okay and the present value is 3h not square by 8 pi g it determines the density scale in the universe if the density is actually much more than this the universe is going to collapse would okay so so this is a very important density scale so we we are into writing this in terms of this density scale and the present value of the hubble parameter as minus h not square by rho critical not and then we have a sum over all the different components possible components and we have the density from each of these components rho i and the pressure from each of these components we will write in terms of the equation of state so we will have 1 plus 3 wi oh sorry 4/3 pi 4 pi g by 3 is going to be 2 times this 2 h not square 8 pi g by 3 is h not is H not. Ah, uh, it's going to be by two, so it's going to be half. Okay. Right, and three by two, so four pi g by three is going to be H not square by two rho critical not. Okay. And we have a factor of. a here
right that is what we have from this equation. We have replaced the pressure 3 p by c square in terms of the equation of state 3 w. And for each component rho i For each component rho i, I can write it in terms of its present density rho i naught into a to the power minus 3 1 plus w. This is something that we have done, I am just repeating it again plus 1. Okay. plus 1. Now, <coughs> there is a question that can be asked straight away. <coughs> For what value of w will the universe be accelerating and not deaccelerating? Suppose I have a material which has negative pressure. So, W is going to be negative. If W is negative, there is a possibility that this term is going to exceed 1. If this term exceeds 1, rather is much is less than 1, then this thing in the bracket could be negative. If this thing in the bracket is negative, then the universe, the gravity, the gravitational force instead of being attractive is going to be repulsive. Okay? There is this possibility. So, the question arises for what value of w is this possibility going to occur? So, w should be if w i for if for a component w i is less than minus 1 by 3 this is going to make cause acceleration instead of deacceleration. If W is exactly equal to one third, it does not contribute to the acceleration at all, which is what we which is the component that has W equal to one third. Recollect we have considered four components. We have considered matter which has got W equal to 0, radiation W equal to plus one third. Then there is curvature. For curvature, what is the value of W? Minus one third. So, for curvature, it does not contribute to this equation at all. That is what we expect. After all, curvature is the constant of integration that arises when you integrate this equation. It does not appear in this equation at all. So, the curvature term does not appear, does not contribute to the acceleration, it is just the constant of integration and when you have curvature only, then you have just free expansion. right? So, the curvature does not contribute to this term at all. Okay, that is how it has been, that, ha that is how it has been, the, the equation of state has been chosen, so that it does not contribute to this, it is just a constant of integration. Okay. So, what we see is that if you want <coughs> the universe somehow if you want the universe to be accelerating instead of deaccelerating, then the equation of states should be such that this parameter w for that component should be less than minus one third. So, this is the criteria for dark energy, dark energy whatever it be if it has to make there are, there are observations which we shall come to which indicate that the universe at present is accelerating not deaccelerating. If you want to have some matter which actually does this, then it should ha satisfy the condition that the W should be less than one third. So, dark energy
refers to a broader class of possible constituents of the universe which satisfy this condition. The cosmological constant is a possibility where W is exactly equal to minus 1. Okay. Now let us go back to the discussion that we had, we were, we were conducting. So we were calculating this term and we have got an expression for this. Okay. Now let us first calculate the the acceleration parameter, the the acceleration parameter for using this. Okay. So the deacceleration parameter using this is, is quite straightforward to calculate. The deacceleration parameter is a double dot by a with the minus sign divided by a dot by a squared okay. and before okay sorry before coming to this before coming to this let me there is another step that I should do that is we can now write this expression for the acceleration in terms of the density parameters because here we had the density at the present density of each of these components. So let me write down this expression in terms of the density parameters A double dot is equal to minus H naught square by 2 and then I have the sum over I. 1 plus 3 w i omega i naught a to the power minus or I can straight away write a dot by a omega. So we have written the ac acceleration of the universe in terms of the contributions from the individual density parameters. Okay. And we can use this straight away to calculate the the acceleration parameter. It will be the ratio of this divided by the Hubble parameter squared. So when you do this, the Hubble parameter square, as you know, has H naught square outside also. That's the expression that we were integrating just a short while ago. So H naught square cancels out, we have half sum over I 1 plus 3 W I omega I naught A to the power minus 3 1 plus W I and here we have sum over I. So that is the deacceleration parameter. So this is the here. So this is the Hubble parameter square H naught square into omega I naught A to the power minus 3 into to the power of 1 into 1 plus W I. Right. So all, all that I have done is I have just substituted that here, substitute the second derivative over here and we get <coughs> the deacceleration parameter. <coughs> now let me ask you a question. <coughs> What happens? Let us just estimate the values of the deacceleration parameter for a few models. Let us first consider a situation where the universe has only matter, purely matter dominated. So, for a matter dominated universe, let us do it quickly. For a please do it, okay. For a matter dominated universe, Q is equal to half, there is a factor of half over here and then we have only one component matter which has no pressure. 
so omega matter a to the power minus 3 omega matter a to the power minus 3 so the numerator and denominator if I have just matter please do the calculation if I have just matter the numerator becomes omega matter naught a to the power minus 3 the denominator is exactly the same thing because this has no pressure okay and so we are led to the conclusion that if I have a matter dominated universe the <coughs> deacceleration parameter is exactly half. If I have a curvature dominated universe, you can tell me straight away without doing the calculation what the deacceleration parameter will be. Does the universe experience any acceleration in a curvature dominated model? No. So, in this particular model, this is going to be 0. And if I have a cosmological constant, lambda dominated universe cosmological constant let us work out what happens in a cosmological constant dominated universe w is minus 1 so this becomes minus 3 minus 3 plus 1 is minus 2 so minus 2 so i have half the denominator has minus 2 now, for cosmological constant, this factor is 1, it remains a constant. With the expansion, it does not change, this also does not change. So, for cosmological constant, this is just omega lambda naught, omega lambda naught. And so, what we have is that this is equal to minus 1. Okay. So, in a universe that is dominated by the cosmological constant, the universe is not deaccelerating, the universe is actually accelerating. So, that is the main role of the cosmological constant. Okay. So, in, if, I, if the universe is dominated by a component which has the equation of state where w is negative and it is less than minus one third, the universe is going to be accelerating instead of deaccelerating. Gravity becomes repulsive instead of being attractive. Okay. Now, let me return to the dynamics of the expansion of the universe. So, I have defined for you what is the cosmological constant or the deacceleration parameter. Let me now finally return to the equation governing the dynamics of the equation. So, in general, this is the equation that we have which governs the dynamics of the universe. So, the question arises from this equation, how do we get the scale factor, how do we get the age of the universe in a general cosmological model. Let me briefly discuss that. So, the equation that we have is A dot by A is equal to H naught and then we have the sum over I omega I 0 A to the power minus 3. 1 plus w i to the power of half. Right, that is the equation that we wish to solve and get the scale factor as a function of time. So, how do we go about solving it? So, this equation is straightforward to solve. You can write down d a by a 1 by h naught d a by a into this whole factor over here this factor over here I am not repeating it is equal to d t <coughs> right. This equation can be written like this all that I have done is I have taken the d t from here onto the right hand side and brought this whole thing down. Now, we can integrate this equation and set the constant of integration that occurs to 0 and what it gives us is that let me write it here. What it gives us is that T is equal to now 
0, we start from the big bang and till the value of the scale factor at which you are interested d a, I have a factor of 1 by h naught over here d a prime by a prime and here I have the sum over i omega i naught a prime to the power minus 3 1 plus w i this whole thing to the power of half. <coughs> so, we have to do this integral over a prime with the limits from 0 to a to get the value of to get the value of the the age of the universe at for any value of the scale factor. Once you do this for different values of a, you can invert it and get a as a function of time. If you wish to calculate the age of the universe, how will you use this to calculate the age of the universe, present age of the universe, what is the present value of the scale factor? The present value of the scale factor is 1. So, you just integrate from 0 to 1 and it will give you the age of the u present age of the universe. Okay. So, the present age of the universe is 1 by the present value of the Hubble parameter into some number and this number is going to be less than 1 if the universe is deaccelerating, it could be more than 1 if the universe is accelerating, it will be exactly 1 if we have free expansion. Okay. Now, I have told you how to integrate I have told you how to determine the scale factor as a function of time, how to work out the expansion history of the universe as a function of time for arbitrary, for an arbitrary cosmological model, where we have assumed that the equation of state is p is equal to w rho c square. If the pressure is something else, cannot be written like this, then this does not hold, otherwise this is quite general. Okay. Now, in a very general situation where we have several components it is simplest to do this numerically. Okay. Instead of trying to work out an analytic solution, it is simplest to do it numerically. So, let me give you an exercise. Let me give you an exercise. Consider the exercise is as follows. Consider two, let us consider two cosmological models. The first cosmological model has omega matter not equal to 0 0.3, 0 0.3, omega curvature not equal to 0 0.7, small h is 0 0.7. Okay, the second model has omega matter not equal to 0 0.3, omega lambda not is 0 0.7, the same value of h. <coughs> okay. So, the basically there are observations which tell us that omega matter at present is 0.3. So, we are considering two possibilities now. The sum of the all the omegas has to be 1. We know that radiation makes a very small contribution. So, it is essentially negligible at present. So, the sum of all the omegas has to be 1. So, we are considering two possibilities. One where there is the rest of it is in the form of curvature and the second when the rest of it is in the form of a cosmological constant. For both these models, I would like you to calculate a as a function of time. So, you have to get graphs of A as a function of time. The second thing to calculate is the current, the present age of the universe T naught. The third thing is calculate the deacceleration parameter as a function of the scale factor. So, this you calculate as a function of A. 
okay. <coughs> Q as a function of A. Okay, so please do these. It you may be required. You can. It may be pos It is possible to do it analytically, but you can also write write a numerical program. Okay, just one integration that has to be done, right? In most cases, and for one case, this doesn't require an integration. This requires an integration. One integration you can do using Simpson's rule or trapezoidal rule. Write a program and do it. Okay. It's very simple. So we shall discuss your results. You know, uh, let us say one week from now. Fine. Let me end today's class over here.